So as in geotechnical um, earthquake engineering and soil structure interactions, uh, combining numerical with experimental methods. Your research interests including uh, resilient seismic design, seismic hazard mitigations, sustainable geotechnical constructions, design against floating foundations for renewable energies, soil liquefactions, tsunami, and their effects on coastal infrastructures. O also scouring of foundations, he has been involved as a consultant in a variety of projects in Europe, the US, and the Middle East. He has now served as national delegate expert for Switzerland in Eurocode 7. Yanis? Thank you very much for uh, the introduction. My last name is Anastasopoulos. I know it's difficult. Uh, a lot of lessons, a lot of stuff, nothing about digital uh, stuff. <laughs> but uh, I think digital transformation is everywhere, so it's uh, it's very important, and we'll see why. So maybe surrounding does it work? The older version. Ah, this is just yes. still your presentation. Ah, okay, this is why I did not recognize. <laughs> <laughs> So we had we had the presentation, uh, let's say, to yes. set the stage. Yes. It works now? Yes, here it is. This is just a couple of uh, words to set the stage. So I don't have to convince you why digital infrastructure is essential, I think. We have uh, a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, computers. Uh, we need to store data. Networks are important. It's not like it was before nice to have. We need it now. And our data, as I think it was also implied by the previous uh, session, is growing rapidly and it's important to be able to use this data. So the development and application of new data analysis methods, in some cases very advanced, like machine learning, artificial intelligence, also calls for uh, this uh, digital transformation, let's say. And this will impact, either we like it or not, will have an impact to the management of critical infrastructure, which is why we're here about. Uh, and it's nice if we can make it this impact to be positive and not negative. So there are many challenges, and this is what we will try to discuss now. Uh, we have, okay, so what we'll try to do, involve stakeholders, okay, from research and also uh, critical infrastructure owners, illustrate specific opportunities, offered by this process of digital uh, transformation, identify challenges and obstacles specific to its uh, stakeholder, let's say, and also try to define potential areas of cross network collaboration and how to advance this collaboration and knowledge, uh, knowledge transfer. Okay, we have uh, five speakers. So each speaker will have a relatively short lecture after every lecture, I would like to have a few minutes for discussion by the audience. I would like to make it as interactive as possible. So each speaker speaks for 12 minutes, how we said something like this. <laughs> Roughly 15 included in a question. Yeah, anyway, we will not, uh, we will not uh, stick to, you know, minutes, but, you know, we try to, to have some time for questions. And then uh, after we finish the lectures and the questions, we will have a panel discussion. But still, it would be nice uh, if everybody could participate. I would really like this to, to make it as interactive as possible. So we start with our first speaker. So these are our speakers. Uh, our first speaker is uh, Mr. Gert Jan Sotmeyer. He's a data strategy manager in Deltares. And his presentation will be uh, towards a federated digital infrastructure for data and models. A few words. He's head of data strategy, as I said, at Deltares, and uh, he's responsible for the topic data in the digital transformation of Deltares. In addition to software renewal and the incorporation of new technologies, data management and standardization, these are all important components for this transformation. So I think uh, the topic of uh, the lecture of Mr. Uh, uh, Sotmeyer is exactly on the heart of what we're talking about today. So please. The floor is yours. And you need also the microphone. Is, I, there, is there a second microphone? Yeah. Yeah, we have yeah. it. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Jonas. see if I can this. Yes. 
Well, <clears throat> already introduced by Jan, so I will keep it short. My introduction, Geert Jan Schotmeijer. So that's the pronunciation, but don't get it so I Geert Jan. Yes, okay. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, besides being data strategy manager at Dataras, I'm also a core member of the digital transformation team. Um, so I put on the picture because if you wouldn't recognize me, that's really my picture. That's one of our offices in uh, in the Netherlands. We have two locations in the Netherlands, Utrecht and Delft. I work in Delft. And during my presentation, I will share a little bit more information of the reason why we did start a digital information at Delft Towers. And I'm zooming in the data sharing part, which this morning I heard a lot of people telling uh, or asking or maybe even begging to share data because we need more data. Um, I think that's true, but there are some downsides to that also. Also, upsides, but I will come to that. First of all, um, the reason to, to start the digital transformation program at Delta Hours anyway is that we are facing not only as the Netherlands and not only as Europe, but also as the world, new challenges or even bigger and larger challenges which are becoming more and more complex. You can't do it on your own anymore. So, what we need is a multidisciplinary approach. I think Cordana also mentioned it this morning. We have challenges, yeah, large challenges, but also large challenges or small challenges that have large impact and need multidisciplinary approach. And not in a collaborative way, but even a little bit a step further, what we call co-creation. So we on the same level of collaboration, which also brings all kind of uh, difficulties with, uh, with, with it, but that, that will be the setting to get to the next step and to, to, to tackle those challenges or to come with solutions or maybe parts of solution this uh, these challenges. And already mentioned by Janus, there are a lot of new techniques coming up. Right? Besides of the enormous growth in data regarding the sensors, new sensor, the bird observation data, et cetera, et cetera. There are also kind of new techniques regarding machine learning AI, generative AI. Uh, <clears throat> those three led to the decision to start a digital transformation at Daltaris. And what we did is that, okay, if you want to be multidisciplinary, you want to have a co-creation and you want to apply the latest techniques, then you have more or less four or five, call this waves, by the way, um, <clears throat> you have to achieve. Right? You have to be sure that you have the right data. So you have, of course, a lot of the data, but you have to know what is the data exactly. So make it fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Use the possibilities of the cloud. Change your way of working, because digital information is not only about techniques, but it's also about change your way you work. So we are still are for a part project oriented, but we are transforming to a product oriented, especially regarding the software. Um, regarding the software, we want to be able to create and use smart software. Not that our current software is done, but what we're trying to do is to involve the new techniques in our software, especially regarding AI kind of solutions and want to combine that in a platform to get or able to co-create with others. So we try to be open as much as possible about the data, about the software, about the source software, so we can help in a multidisciplinary approach to tackle those challenges we face on the, in the Netherlands, also in the whole world. But today I'm going to focus on the data, um, about sharing data. And I came across this a nice graph. It's already three years old, uh, but I think it's still relevant. It's created during the UN Climate uh, Change Conference in uh, in the UK. It's a Met Office uh, Met Office uh, created picture. Let's call it that way. And if you see why is it important to share your data, one of it is it's. I think that's one of the reasons we're here, where the, why the Julep uh, initiative started anyway is to promote collaboration, collaboration and innovation. So if you share your data, researchers from other institutes can combine with their expertise and their knowledge to tackle new uh, problems. That really, really helps. The second reason is, and that's very important for us as a knowledge institute, is regarding what we call increased trans transparency. So if you are able that's also something that takes a lot of effort. Able to share data in such a way that people can trace back your findings, so maybe you can validate your findings. It contributes to the transparency, so it contributes to what we call the scientific integrity of Taltaris. The third is acceleration of the scientific progress. 
you might think that's maybe the same as above, but what we mean here is that if you share your data, another researcher can use your data, build upon that data, his findings. So he doesn't do it over all over again. Duplication will be less over there. And the four, and four of course, is it benefits society. We can we go go co-rate together or co-create together. We can come up with solutions much faster, probably much better, much durable also. But Besides these, these, these incentives to share data, there are still some hurdles to take. One of the first hurdles is privacy concerns. And you may think privacy concerns about the data we generate, we don't have that. Well, actually we do. Um, regarding the talk of Chris and Elmar, talking about the, the North Sea, the ships going along those offshore wind farms, they have this, I call it transponder, I don't know if that's the right word, but the AIS. So that's important to know which kind of ship is going where, which speed and which load, et cetera, et cetera. It's very useful information, valuable information also for uh, this offshore wind parks regarding safety and how it can avoid co uh, collisions. But this data can be related to the people on the ship, so it's privacy data. So we still have concerns regarding privacy concerns about data. The second hurdle is misinterpretation, misuse. misuse. I also heard it this morning, uh, yeah, but people can use the data I generate for all kinds of other purposes, which is not intended to. So maybe I don't need to share it. We had this nitrogen, nitrogen uh, discussion in the Netherlands. There was the same, don't share data. And if you do the share data, people use it, or maybe abuse it for other discussions. That's a difficult one, difficult decision to make. Uh, lots of competitive advantage. Oh, I heard Tenet this morning, and I was talking about uh, sharing data. I think that's very powerful with your competitors, but people still, or organizations, but I call that way, are very reluctant to do so. And resource constraints. So it takes effort to share your data. Well, it takes effort to share your data in a good way. So we can share your data because you see all kind of data portals popping up, but well, if that's data sharing, you can have discussion about that. And there are a lack of incentives. So what you see, and also at Deltaris, is that the data we produce, Based on that data, we, we, we create our own findings. But other people are going to build up on the data. So the incentive is somewhere else, not our own location. That makes it also very difficult to share data in a proper way. Well, luckily, so not to be neg too negative, there are also some positives uh, going on in the world. You see that the younger generation, I was just during the lunch, uh, sitting next to the younger generation, I would, uh, I would say, um, they're they're not that reluctant to share their data. There's also a downside to it, but I think the new generation is more into sharing data than people from my age, let's go that way. Um, there are more and more data-driven decisions, but it's also called for more data in a shareable way. Digital twins is coming up. It's more or less already what I call a terminology, which uh, maybe it's obvious already, but it's, it's also, we, can, we are able to make a digital world to play scenarios to see what is, is, going to, is going to happen. And what is very interesting is the open science. So people force you to be open as much as possible on your research uh, so they can validate your findings. So those drivers, they lead to some kind of trends. And then I come to the more uh, technical part. Well, on technical part, I will not go dive too deep into it. You see all kinds of trends popping up. So streaming the data, uh, active metadata, because you can share data, but if there's no metadata, you don't know what the data actually is or what the information could be. Uh, and I want to share or want to dive a little bit deeper in what we call the data mesh. If you look at the data mesh, the techniques behind it is that it's federated learning, learning secure multi secure multi-part computation, and the federated data infrastructure. So it's decentralized. So if you look at federated learning, you are able to learn your machine learning you, you train your machine uh, learning model based on data models without the other sharing your data. Very interesting to do, very interesting technique. So you don't have to be reluctant to give people access to your data, you don't share it, you give them the opportunity to use it. More or less the same as the multi-party computation. You allow others to compute a function on, based on your data without sharing it. So that's, you know, there's no, don't hold you back and share your data because that's, that's technically is that possible. All you need is a data federated infrastructure. There is, of course, the effort. Um, 
this is the technique. So uh, I think I probably will share the slides so we can read it uh, in a little bit more uh, relaxed way. Uh, so let's dive a little bit deeper in the data federated infrastructure because I think there are the opportunities also for us. So if you look at the data federated infrastructure, this is more or less simplified version of it. So we have all kind of uh, let's call it organizations having data sets of their own, and they are domain experts. So they really know what this data means. So if you give them the control in how to share and treat this data, this data will always be of good quality. I would assume, without eh, because if you do it in a silent way, they put it somewhere else and they say, okay, it's over there. I don't take care of it anymore. Someone else has to do it. If you do it in this way, you can find it in this uh, in the center part, so the green part. You can find it. But the actual data sharing part or data, the, the access to the data goes directly from one participant to the other. Do not silo it in, in, a, in a centralized way, but do it like this. But that's more, it's, it's a simplified version of it, but I hope you grasp the idea behind it. And the same you can do with uh, computation. Well, if you see all these um, um, opportunities or where it's heading or the trends or techniques, and you want to do this, Federated, federated data sharing, federated modeling is, in my opinion, the way to go. But that's also the reason why we joined forces, the Dutch Knowledge Institute, they were here, Delta is probably hopefully known by you, man. And we also have Marin, shipping part, and all that is about the, the airplanes, the, um, the aircraft, that kind of stuff. They know it's more or less generic uh, um, research department, and we have Wageningen, the agriculture part. We joined forces, and what we are going to do is we're going to create a fertile research environment based on this data federation and knowledge federation. So what we are going to do is that you remain in control of your own data, your sovereignty of your own data still remains at your side. But we are able to do what we want to do is federated modeling and federated learning. So we are able to use the data of these different research institutes without actually accessing the data or sharing the data. That's the nice thing about this technique. So it's scalable, it's expandable, scalable in the sense that you can scale up, of course, uh, and it's transferable. So once you have these techniques in place, other ones can easily use the same kind of technique. And with that, we're trying to be able to facilitate, the, facilitate collective brain power of the Dutch research institutes. I think this could be an example how we can collaborate also in the future within the GeoLab, for instance. So, um, and to be honest, it's not totally new. It's already there uh, to a certain extent. So there's the, the initiative, maybe known by you, some of you already, the European Open Science Cloud or the GAIA-X, which is more or less the same, but more a little bit commercial. Uh, recently, we brought the published a paper on this compute part. This is regarding urbanization data, sharing them in a federated way, but also the modeling part of it. Um, it's already there, but it's not really common practice. And I think the, the effort should be there to make it common practice. Um, and of course, uh, this morning I heard the, 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 and the director of NG talking about the football, that is not that good in football. But I think in Norway we have Erling Haaland, and in, in the Netherlands we have Johan Cruyff. He said every upside has a downside. So that's also with this, this more, uh, no, not more, there are many things which are and it's hard to be also disadvantaged or challenged to it because uh, it's, it's, it could be rather complex. So you have the infrastructure, but it could be complex. But the one is there, you benefit from it. The performance regarding, if you remember the graph I show you with this mobility, mobility data, if you need data from each node and you're somewhere with a bad internet connection, that could be some performance issues. So that's on the downside. But the most important point is also an organizational part. So you need some governance. So you have to decide with each other. How are we going to share our data? So what does the data mean, et cetera, et cetera? That's the collaboration part also. And you need some standardization, so that's inevitable. It doesn't mean that you don't have flexibility anyway, So, but it's just speaking the same language about the data that you share. But there are also, of course, advantages. So your, your sovereignty of the data remains at your own place, so you can also protect it the way you want to do it. You can reduce the cost because it's only uh, it's not siloed, which which can maybe get a, a lost track of the cost. Let's go that way. It's very agile, so you can add new hubs to the environment. So if someone else joins in GeoLab, for instance, and wants to join the federated data environment, it could be very easy because everything is there. You can copy paste. Maybe it's a little bit simplified, but something like that. And about the security, can be enhanced the way you want it 
regarding your data. So I will end with this, uh, with this slide. So I, will, I would invite you to take up the challenge to think about this, share your data in a federated way, and maybe hopefully at least think about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank